Hello friends and welcome to my craft room. I'm so glad you came to stop by and join me today for this episode of some fun Christmas projects. Now I want to say thank you to everyone who did click on this video returning or new. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Today I've got five fun plank hacks using these Dollar Tree wood supplies. Now if you missed this video by chance, I had a lot of people say that they did not get their notifications. I'm going to link it at the end so you don't miss it. It's got 10 fun new DIYs for ornaments. All right, now let's get crafting. We are going to be using these wood planks from the Dollar Tree. It is so amazing how many fun things you can make with these. And I'm going to start by taking out three of them. These go such a long way and it's just $1.25 for the pack. I love these when I see them. I definitely snatch up some for my craft room because I'm going to show you how cool this project is. You can make the most beautiful modern looking lantern and depending on how you style it it really can change up the look so i started by putting four little wood squares at the bottom for some legs and then now i'm taking four of these longer craft sticks that you can also get in their wood section and you can see that i'm doing a little bit of an angle cut with some dull old scissors this is going to allow us to put the rooftop on our lantern and it's going to give it more support for it you'll see in just a second what i'm talking about when i put the roof on so once i've got all four on i made sure that those are facing out to the proper directions so that it will support that roof when it's at an angle once I've got them glued into place and they're nice and sturdy, I'm now going to come in and start adding some support. And this is going to give it that modern farmhouse look that is just so cute and popular this Christmas season. So I'm just going to go three across on the inside and I'm not going to do four because you want to be able to have an opening big enough to be able to put your candle in. I'm going to use a faux candle. You'll see it at the very end where it's battery operated. Now you can see here that I'm following the exact same direction as I'm gluing in my sticks. So that way on one side they're going one direction and then on the outside so the sticks don't have any issues and collide or have any weird overlapping you can see I'm coming on the outside of my lantern and going the opposite direction and gluing that into place once you've got all three sides with their sticks glued into place and you can see here what it looks like when I put my arm inside you're going to go ahead and make sure that you support those sticks. Now you can see that they're naturally wanting to pull towards the top where there's not something to keep them in place. So I kind of push the sticks apart a little bit with my hand to make sure it's allowing the glue to keep things drying in place and not kind of collapsing on me as I go. Then I'm going to come back in with that support glue that I just mentioned and I'm going to make sure that I'm giving a nice amount in between those joints and this is going to really strengthen it being that we're just using glue to adhere this together. Now we're going to move on to the roof. I'm going to measure the width of one of the planks and I'm going to just simply cut that down to size and this is going to help make the roof sturdier and be able to look really high in as if you bought it from the store. So you can see I'm just putting a bead of glue and I'm pushing that right up to the edge of that wood plank. And now I'm going to come back in with the other one to create an angled roof. Now remember those cuts earlier that we did at an angle? This is why I was saying it's going to give it some more support because it's going to allow that wood roof to sit on there nice and flat without it having the sticks being originally just a flat top surface. This really is going to allow it to bond together nicely. Then again, I'm going to come in with that supportive glue, add a little bit more, and then at this point, you're ready to paint it whatever color you want. I will say I did really love painting it black because after I painted it black, you really can't even see those mounted up parts of the hot glue and it makes it just look so high end without noticing any of the construction of this project. Now I'm going to take this granary garland, I'm going to twist it around into a wreath type circle and you don't have to do this but again I love to take it a little bit further here on my channel. So I'm putting in this little wreath garland and now I'm adding in some of these adorable pine cones that you can get in their floral section. 
I love these pine cones, especially for this Christmas season because it just gives it that really pretty modern farmhouse look, very wintry. Now I'm gonna add up at the very top. Again, you don't have to do this part, but I love a bow. I have never been offended by a bow. I think bows are great. <laughs> so I'm gonna just zigzag back some ribbon until I've got two loops on one side, two loops on the other side. This is the easiest way to make a double looped bow. Then I'm gonna gather it right in the middle, loop it around the tree and pull it through the hole. And then I kind of work down the knot into the middle and keep playing with the placement of the tails of the bow and the placement of the actual loops of the bow. Once I've got that all into place and it's nice and snug and I like the way that it looks, I'm gonna just simply fluff out all those bow loops and you've got the most beautiful bow and it took like seconds to do. I figured this out a couple weeks ago and I just was thinking, oh my word, why have I not done bows like this my whole life? It's so much faster. Now I've added a little bit of greenery to the top of my lantern, added on a cute little log chimney, put on that bow and the finishing touch is to add a couple more pine cones and to add in my battery operated candlelight. I've got so many fun projects for this video today. I hope you are enjoying it. And if you are, I hope you would consider clicking the subscribe button and joining me here on my channel so that you get those notifications when videos pop up. Now I know a couple people have told me recently they weren't getting their notifications. And the way you fix that is by going into past videos, watching about two or three of them that will reactivate my channel into the algorithm for your preferences and your likings. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. This project is so darling and just perfect for the Christmas season if you're looking for an easy craft. I'm gonna take one square wood plank, three of the tumbling stacking blocks, two wooden beads, one half round bead, and then two popsicle sticks. It's amazing how you can take a whole bunch of nothing and turn it into something. I really love that about crafting. So I'm taking my crocodile, I punched two holes, and now I'm going to create the roof of our little manger scene that we're going to turn into the most beautiful ornament. So I'm gonna take that first popsicle stick, I cut it at an angle, and now I'm gonna just line it up with the other one until I get the peak of the roof that I really desire the look of. I'm gonna take my pencil, draw the line so that when I go to glue these together, they fit nicely. And again, whenever I cut wood with scissors, I'm using really dull scissors. Do not use your best fabric scissors. It will just tear them up. I made that mistake as a teenager with my mom's scissors. She was not very happy with me. <laughs> anyway, I think now that I'm adult, I should probably repair those scissors or get her a new nice pair for her. I think maybe I'll do that for Christmas. Surprise her with some great scissors. Now at this point, I've glued on my roof. I've painted it. I've put on my tumbling blocks. I've painted Joseph a nice slate gray. Mary, a really pretty mauve color. Baby Jesus, a little golden color. And then I've put on all of their heads. Now at this point, you really could stop there, but friends, I just can't help myself sometimes. I love this moss. I've said it so many times. I just glued some on and I'm trimming it down so it's not so crazy. I like the look of it being kind of tidy. So now I'm going to take some of this really pretty soft gray color to create the night sky and some shading around this little nativity scene. And once I've got that done, I decided to add some little white dots for the starry night. And I'm gonna take some wire, those holes we punched earlier. This is how we're gonna turn it into an ornament. I took some wire, I wrapped it around my craft night because I love that coiled look of wire. I feel like it's just so farmhouse cute. I don't know. I, I personally really like how 
coiled up wire looks and it reminds me of some cute decor I had around my house growing up with my mom. So I'm gonna just take that, stretch out that coiled up wire, loop it through that hole we punched with the crocodile and twist it into place on both sides. Now I'm gonna add a little star button because, oh my word, it's just such a cute little detail and touch. Add a bow, cause I love my bows. And then at this point, I'm just gonna simply come in, add a little brown paint on that wire cause it adds that rustic look to it. You don't have to do this part. And you could even put like some string or ribbon, but either way, it's such a cute project to try. I had this idea pop in my head. I thought, how cute would it be if I took these square planks and I turned them into a stack of tumbling Christmas presents? So I'm taking one of these wood bases, that a plaque that you can get from the Dollar Tree in their wood section. I drilled down two holes just to make the sticks a little stronger and I glued them into place. Then I took these three squares, I painted one a really bright, fun green, one white, and then the other one I'm putting on white burlap and cutting it down so you have this really pretty texture on the wood. I really love how that turned out. Once the glue is dried on my wood base and my sticks that are gonna have the presents go up it so this looks very store high end looking i'm gonna paint that all black and then set it aside again now i'm gonna take the back of my brush and some black paint and i'm gonna create a really cute staggered polka dot look on one of the presents there was something about doing this that reminded me of like kate spade I don't know what it is, but I just, I love polka dots and I thought this was a really fun detail to that present in particular. Then you can see at this point that I'm adding on some bows to my presents. This is gonna add all kinds of fun texture and you really could customize this however you want. On the front of my burlap present, I'm gonna add this pretty green silky ribbon and a little bow right in the middle and then on the polka dot, I'm going to add the red ribbon by wrapping it around and adding a big bow to the top. And the green present, I used some ticking stripe fabric that I had on hand that I've been using all this Christmas season. And then I'm going to add a little wreath right tucked underneath that big red bow. I think these three presents are so adorable. You really could customize them to whatever your home decor colors are. At this point, I'm going to start by gluing on the middle present first, because I'm gonna kind of make it off-centered. You can see that it's tilted and tipping over to the side like a stack of presents just kind of going wonky and tumbling all over the place. Then I put on the bottom present, and then the last, I'm trimming up the bow once I knew the length I wanted for the top present, and I'm gonna twist that to the other side I really love the idea of them going back and forth, kind of twisting, making them look very topsy-turvy for a cute stack of presents. Now at this point, because I like the farmhouse look, I'm gonna come in and distress it a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but I love that different dimension to that distressed look. You could leave it as is and not do the distressing. I'm gonna take some green garland, twist two of them together. These are those ties that you can use to add up your garland to like a banister, a mantle. You use them to twist things together. I'm gonna use those to wrap around the bottom of my cute stand that I have here. Add on some darling pine cones to the top red bow and down to the base. And at this point, friends, this was so much fun to make. I hope that you enjoyed that project. Now don't forget, I'm over on Instagram. I'm sharing all kinds of fun things over there and I know a lot of people had questions about our move to our new home. I give lots of sneak peeks over there and yes, I do have a tour coming of my craft rooms very soon and of my home very soon. So keep a lookout over there on Instagram 
and here on YouTube. All right, we're gonna use five of these wood planks and as well as eight of these squares. We are gonna be creating a beautiful high-end wood box that you can use honestly for pretty much anything. I'm gonna be using it as a table decor piece where I'm gonna put beautiful red berries in it for this Christmas season. So I'm starting by taking four of the squares, I glued them to one of the planks right in their corners and now I'm using that as a support system to glue, to glue on the sides. Once I've got those four around the side, I'm now going to take the last four squares and I'm going to glue those right into the box. Now you could use some other things besides the wood squares. I knew that I wasn't going to be looking at the inside of the box, so I ended up using the wood squares for really strong supports. If you wanted to use this as like a gift box, you could take these wooden dowels and use those as supports in the middle. That would work too. So you can see here that I'm cutting down those craft wooden sticks for supports on the side and to cover up that seam where the wood doesn't perfectly line up. And now I'm going to paint it all white to give it a nice, pretty, fresh Christmas look. Once that's done, I'm going to put some foam inside of that box glued into place and I'm going to add in these berries. I had a couple people ask me, how do I store these berries? I actually have what I call a flower tower. It's this huge tower. I'll show it in my craft room tour that's coming very soon. And I just store them out in the open all year long. And then if they get dusty at all, I just dust it over really quick. But really, it doesn't do that. Now, if any of the berries pop off, I do like to take a little bit of red paint. And I just tap the tops of those spots where the foam might be showing. And it looks brand new again. So that's how I store my berries. At this point, I've added a ticking stripe fabric bow around it. Found an old ornament that I had on hand from the Dollar Tree. And this looks so high-end and so beautiful to put out for Christmas. This project is so whimsical and darling to have in your home, especially if you love snowmen. I'm going to take three of these planks. Using my crocodile, I'm going to punch some holes out. On two of the planks, I'm going to do four, one in each corner. And then on the third plank, I'm only going to punch out two holes on the same side. So you can see here two is on this one and the other ones have four. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and paint these all white. Now, if you wanted to make a really cool gift, at this point, you could ditch the idea and not do a snowman. You could end up doing a really beautiful display of family photos on these wood planks or something with really neat sayings that are memorable and special to you and your family as a gift for a loved one. Now, I'm going to use some wire. I'm going to fasten those holes together. You can see here that they are all situated where the very last one doesn't with the missing those extra holes. That's the very bottom because we want that to be nice and clean where there's not another one that's jointing together. And then on the other side where there's the extra holes, that's going to be where we have our hang up wire to be able to hang it up on a hook, a wall, a Christmas tree, whatever you want. So I ended up using wire. You could use twine, you could use embroidery thread. You can use a lot of different things to combine these holes all together. Once I've got all my wire in place, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of distressing first. You could always skip the distressing. I know it's kind of hit and miss for a lot of people, but I like a little distressing. I'm gonna add on the two cute eyes, some dots for the coal smile, and for the carrot nose, I didn't want to just do a straight line across like you can see sometimes in decor. I made it a little bit more rough and bumpy looking. I thought that was a really cute detail, made the carrot look a little more dimensional. 
Now I'm going to take some of these Darling Wood cutouts that are snowflakes. I thought that this was such a fun touch to put on our little snow person we're making here. And I'm going to just add on Mod Podge after I've got those glued in place. And this is going to allow us to bond on my glitter I've been using a lot this season. I picked this glitter up at Walmart. I had a lot of people asking me over this last couple of weeks. It's in their craft section. It's a sugar glitter and a chunkier glitter. And those two combined make the most beautiful frosty texture. You can see that I added some of that Mod Podge to the buttons and as well to certain sides of my little snow person, snowman, and the top of the carrot nose. Once those are all done, I'm going to add on a bow. You can use any kind of bow you want to match your decor. I really love the red and white for Christmas time, so I'm using this ticking stripe fabric. And then after that, and all of the glitter has been put in place, you really can customize this however you want and just have fun with it. Crafting is my favorite pastime. That and watching movies with my family. I'm not going to lie. I love a good Christmas movie this time of year. I hope you enjoyed these five projects and can see that there's so much potential with these square wooden planks. I hope you give them a try. And don't forget, so far this season I have had several videos come out with lots of different ideas. I'm going to link some at the end of this video and remember you can find them on my channel if you want to go back and check them out. But remember to check out this one. It's the one that came out a couple days ago. I hope you'll enjoy those 10 projects as well as these 5 today. Thanks so much for stopping by and until the next episode, bye friends.